reading and studying that I do on spiritual outcomes, spiritual subjects, is of any benefit to me, or if I'm just accruing knowledge that I'm going to have to discard at some point. As long as you're willing to discard it, it's not a problem. Most people don't discard the knowledge they collect, though, and they keep uh, in memory their experiences of higher consciousness, both of which are in the way. Uh, the best mind is a beginner's mind, the mind that doesn't know, because the mind that doesn't know can just be. A mind that knows is constantly trying to prove that it knows, has got an ego trip around knowing. Uh, so a lot of people who get into higher consciousness, get into spirituality, after a few years become very knowledgeable and as a result become very stuck because now they have this identity of the one who knows and uh, they're constantly trying to prove that they're a little bit more advanced than other, other human beings. Whereas really not knowing is the best because in not knowing you can be in wonderment. So dropping knowledge or letting go of knowledge is important. As far as collecting knowledge is concerned, I collected knowledge for a lot of years, 20 years, 25 years, collected spiritual knowledge. I studied uh, all the Buddhas, all the old ones, studied uh, the Hindus, studied the Sufis, studied the Taoists. I was very interested in um, what they had to say and after 25 years, I, I, I got to realize that they all say exactly the same thing. Surrender. The very thing that our mind doesn't want to do, they say. So we go on collecting knowledge because we don't want to surrender. We don't want to because it's difficult to surrender. And then we look at, well, why is it so difficult to surrender? And it's because the mind is a survival mechanism. It's not designed for surrender, it's de designed for survival. Surrender is actually against survival. And so, as surrender takes us to higher consciousness, uh, that's very beautiful, but it's against nature. It's against nature for us to practice surrender because it's against survival. So not that many people go to higher consciousness because the mind is not programmed for that. The mind is programmed to control. It's programmed to defend. It's programmed to protect. All of these things keep the mind in lower consciousness. Surrender is something that has to be practiced, which in a way is against the survival mechanism. So someone who has raised their consciousness levels has defeated the survival mechanism. They have gone against nature. So it's not natural to see that many people with higher consciousness because it's, not, uh, it's, it's against the survival. It's against the species in a way. It's more natural for people to stay in lower consciousness. And so people are learning because they think they can raise their consciousness levels by learning about spirituality, about learning about enlightenment, satori, whatever else. But no amount of knowledge raised consciousness levels ever. The same as no amount of knowledge can heal a wound of the heart, ever. The only thing that works is practice. The practice of acceptance, the practice of surrender. If we look at meditation itself, it is the practice of surrender. We're bringing our awareness to something that is real and abandoning that that is not. The mind, the dream, the story, the words, whatever's in our head. We're abandoning that for what is real. In Buddhist meditation, that's generally the breath at the lip, which is real. It's actually happening. It's not imagined. It's actually there. And so the thought comes in, awareness is taken back to the breath. The mind is actually surrendering itself for what is real. So it's being trained in the art of surrender. So the practice of meditation in itself is the practice of surrender. And so many teachers teach meditation as a way to higher consciousness because it actually works. If there isn't in your life some practice of letting the mind go, the mind is just going to stay locked in lower consciousness. It's not going to master itself. Because a mind that can stay surrendered is a mind that has mastered itself. But that's not natural. It's not natural for a mind to stay still when it's not needed. It's natural for a mind to keep talking to itself, running around like a monkey really. 
A trained mind will stay still without discipline. It'll just stay there because that's its default nature. But that takes a lot of practice. That sort of mind supports higher consciousness. That sort of mind will support enlightenment. That sort of mind has equanimity. So yeah, that's necessary. But no amount of knowledge will help that. What you've heard from me won't help it. Nothing you've heard here today will help. Only the practice will help. 